Hello, I'm Nick, host of the Resident Evil podcast, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my preliminary thoughts on Resident Evil Village. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Capcom for providing us with a review copy, and for a more in-depth, non-spoiler review, please check out the latest Resident Evil podcast. I'll put a link in the description below to the YouTube link, but please be aware it, we are available on all major podcast outlets, Apple, Spotify, Castbox, Podbean, we're all there. Please download. It's a non-spoiler review featuring the entire team. This is just me having a quick natter to the camera about what I think of Resident Evil Village. This is non-spoilers. Please enjoy. Here it is, Resident Evil Village. Or Resident Evil 8, doesn't matter. What matters is this is the latest in the Biohazard series and the first wholly new story since the end of Zoe and Not A Hero DLC of Resident Evil 7. The story picks up with Ethan Winters, hero of the last game in this cold, snowy village, looking for his daughter Rose, who has been taken by none other than Chris Redfield. We also see him kill Mia. It's quite a departure for Chris and sets up the rest of the storyline walking with Ethan. Now, I loved Ethan. I thought he was great in Resident Evil 7. A black canvas, so to speak. However, I understood some fans' concerns that he was a nobody in a main-numbered Resident Evil game and didn't have much of a personality either. Rest assured, the characterization of Ethan in Village is superb. In fact, the entire cast is strong. The writing is of a high standard and the voice cast, Ethan especially, really puts in a hell of a performance. Sure, there's classic Resident Evil cheese, but it is grounded and convincing, despite the crazy world that Resident Evil Village inhabits. A lot of the cast from Resident Evil Remake 3 return, notably Jeff Sheen, now playing Chris. He does sound exactly like Carlos, and that can be a little jarring at times, if, like me, you thought Jeff's performance as Carlos was superb. So what about the village itself? In a word, beautiful. This is without doubt the best looking RE Engine game to date, and I say that having experienced Village on the PlayStation 4 Slim. I witnessed no lag or substantial frame drops, and with HDR mode activated, Village looked sensational. There are a few moments when you can see the entire village from a high vantage point, and it is awe-inspiring. Also, there is a sort of day-night cycle, and so the changing light and shadows makes a huge impression on the player. The level of detail in Village and the castle is something else. The homes are littered with tools, household items, food, and really gives the impression of this place has been lived in. Think the Baker Plantation, but spread out across the entire village. Compare it to, say, the village of Resident Evil 4, which on the face of it looked quite well lived in, but when you dug a little deeper, it seemed quite barren. This is far from that example. If you're anything like me, then you'll be spending ages just looking around, taking in everything this game has to offer. And with Resident Evil 7's crouch mechanic returning, you can really get up close and personal with many a things. Although I would say that there aren't as many hidden items that can be found using this method as there were in Resident Evil 7. Moving outside the village, there are a number of other locations to visit, including Castle Dimitrescu. Yes, that's how it's said throughout the game. Again, a great level of detail is splattered through the castle, with the beautiful decorations contrasting nicely to the dungeons and blood-filled torture rooms. There are other areas that I, d I don't want to spoil at this point in time, because doing so would ruin your gaming experience, but needless to say, out of all the main hub areas that you play in this game, all of them are uniquely decorated and have a very different feel and atmosphere to them, making this quite a unique experience in my opinion. However, we can't mention the castle without talking about its inhabitants. Lady Dimitrescu and her daughters are formidable opponents and will chase you during your adventure. It's tense, you've got to plan your route and keep a close ear out to footsteps as she stalks the hall, which reminds me, the sound design on this game is second to none. If you can play this game in surround sound on headphones or with speakers, then please do. There is a big set piece later in the game which I will say now is probably Resident Evil's scariest thing they have ever done. You will know when you're there, don't worry, but make sure when you get to that point you are playing at night with some form of surround sound on. Trust me, it will be worth it. 
Another big plus with Resident Evil Village is the exploration. By far the most accomplished title to date for this. There are optional side quests, treasure hunts, hidden paths. There's a real reward for exploring the map. Even so, at the end of my playthrough I still had three unused key items left in my inventory. And I still don't know where they're used from. So I'm looking forward to going back and trying to find their homes. On top of this, Village has some excellent puzzles. The fire pit puzzle from the demo is the tip of the iceberg here, with some great and deceptively complex combinations for you to uncover. Before talking about something I didn't like, a lot of fans will want to know how it feels overall as a game. It clearly takes some of its cues from Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 7. So without spoiling too much, this is much more of an action game as some of the developers already said. And it is certainly true in my opinion. Uh, it's more action based than Resident Evil 7, but not as over the top as Resident Evil 4. It's sort of in the middle ground between the two titles, probably an attempt by Capcom to try and please both sets of fans of those two titles. Does it work? On the whole, I would say yes. Balance is good, generally, but there are some action-heavy sequences that personally I wasn't thrilled with. I expect these moments to be heavily discussed by the fandom, as it wasn't bad per se, far from it. It was just a bit different to perhaps what uh, you and I may be expecting. Where there were shocks and changes comes to the storyline. Clearly I'm not going to spoil it, but needless to say, the storyline and the implications that this game brings is going to be one of the major talking points of Resident Evil Village. My prediction, this will keep the fans talking and guessing and speculating up until an inevitable Resident Evil 9. Yes, it's that noteworthy. And for me, what we play in the game and read in the files is of such a standard I am prepared to give some of the more ridiculous elements a pass. And yes, there are some nonsense, but that really should be expected when we're dealing with a game that features wolves, witches and vampires. Ethan's adventure is thrilling, shocking, even inspiring in parts, and cements the Winters clan as key players in the Resident Evil franchise alongside the Redfields and the Kennedys of this world. A bold claim, I think you'll agree, but I think once everyone's played the game and been able to experience Ethan's adventure, I think you'll all be in agreement that his return has been absolutely worth it. Those are my initial thoughts on Resident Evil Village. As I said, I think it's going to have a significant impact on the fandom, and I look forward to discussing it with our fans online and in our Discord. For more discussions, please check out our podcast, as I said, available on YouTube, but on all major podcast apps, where you can also find all our podcasts on just about every other Resident Evil game that has been to date. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.